Good morning. How are we doing? My name is um, Steve. For those of you who I've not met before, I'm part of the team here at FCC. Um, and it's great to have you with us today, um, whether you're here in the room or also joining us online. Um, the question, we're going to start a new series today called Rhythms. But before we do that, the question that was on the screen was, what is one skill that you wish you had? So let's hear it. Anybody? Skiing. Skiing. Very handy this week, that would have been, wouldn't it? Any other skills? Flying, that would be a good one. IT. IT. Music, playing a musical instrument, did somebody say? Yeah. Singing. Any, any more for any more? Crocheting. What was that? Crocheting. Crocheting. Very good. DIY. DIY. Lots of great answers there. Um, my answer would be that I wish I had rhythm. I wish that I had rhythm. Um, just like Sam on the drums over there. Um, there's uh, something that um, happened about uh, 20 years ago. It was my 14th birthday. And uh, I asked for my birthday if I could have a set of bongo drums. Like, that's what every 14-year-old asks for, right? And uh, I got these bongo drums. And pretty soon after getting these bongo drums, I became part of the church worship team. So, like, how good is that? Um, I was, like, accelerated straight onto the worship team, and I played these bongo drums in the worship team for about, um, I think it was about 18 months, actually. And people in the church that I was at when I was younger, like, they were very kind. Um, probably the word is very gracious. And they used to, like, encourage me. They were so encouraging. Um, but after about 18 months... I just decided to pack up my bongos and never play in the worship team again. I, I, don't, I think I'd just kind of grown out of that phase. It was an era in church life where there was like a percussionist. We'd have a drummer, but there'd also be a percussionist. And they'd have like shakers and wind chimes. And if anybody was here about 15 years ago, it was part of the worship team here then. Unfortunately, I never graduated to getting any wind chimes. They would have been cool. But um, that was kind of like my stint in the worship team. I say people, as I said, people were very encouraging, but no one ever asked me to come back. Um, you know, like when I sort of just disappeared from the team, nobody ever invited me back. I think the reason why I knew I needed to give it up, though, is because I have no rhythm. I just don't. Um, and so I just made a joyful noise for the Lord, I guess. But like, I really don't have any rhythm. Something else that I am really good at um, in, a, in a prideful way now is, is dad dancing. And that is to say that actually I'm terrible at dancing. I'm really bad because I have no rhythm. And it winds my daughters up who have absolutely got rhythm and are very good dancers when I join in with them. Um, but rhythm would be the thing that I wish I had, the skill that I wish I had. Obviously, kind of having spent my time on the church worship team, I'm a bit of a kind of expert when it comes to music theory. So let me tell you what the definition is of rhythm. Rhythm is the recurrence of notes and rests, also known as silences, in time, when a series of notes and rests repeats, it forms a rhythmic pattern. Talking about rhythm, we all have rhythms in our daily lives. We all do things that when you put them together, they make up the rhythm of our life. It might be that every day you have a wash. Hopefully so. It might be that you brush your teeth or you have a set amount of meals at kind of roughly the same time each day. It might be that you go to work or you go to school or college and perhaps you do your homework or you take the kids to school, you pick the kids up from school or you do some exercise. And when you put these things together, you get the rhythm of <clears throat> your life. And as I said, we're in this new series called rhythms. As we look at this word rhythms, as we look at this series, we're going to be talking about how we can create regular patterns for connecting with God and how these patterns in life, they build up together this rhythm of how we can connect with God. Like I said before about rhythm and musical theory, something else about rhythm is it helps to sustain a song. When a song is played right, it's because the musicians have been able to put together a pattern of music to make that longer sound. 
without rhythm, the, 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 the song sounds chaotic. And so if it wasn't for Sam and Ty this morning just kind of leading the rhythm, the, the song might have been a bit chaotic, right? But together they were able to pull together this rhythm with Mandy on the keys as well, and the song didn't sound chaotic. But without rhythm in our lives, life can at times be chaotic, it can be exhausting, and it can be difficult. And that's something that Jesus warned of. Jesus said, like, we're going to have trouble in life. We're going to have difficult times. But Jesus also demonstrated and taught about rhythms to help sustain us. Rhythm that helps us to connect with God. And so that's what we're going to be looking at together in this series. This the series is really built around some of the words of Jesus in what's called the Sermon on the Mount. And so there's a, a part of scripture that is now called the Sermon on the Mount. And in this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught about some rhythms that can help us to connect <clears throat> with God. And so between now and Easter, we're going to be looking at these different rhythms. Rhythms that Jesus recommended and how they create this way, these patterns of us connecting with God. Some of the rhythms that we'll look at are um, prayer, fasting, forgiveness, self-examination, um, to name just a few of them. But first, before we do that, before we get into our passage for today, have you ever watched a film um, where somebody has ruined the ending for you before you've seen it? Have you ever had that moment? We might call that where you've not had a spoiler alert. <clears throat> and about a year ago, um, there was a lot of buzz around the James Bond film, No Time to Die. And uh, if you've not seen that film yet and you intend to watch it, spoiler alert, okay? You need to like cover your ears for a bit if that's okay, or press mute if you're watching at home. Just zone out for a bit and then I'll invite you back in in a moment. But about a year ago, I was down the, the staff corridor, which is just behind here, and uh, Lois was talking about how she'd been to see James Bond the night before, and she was, she was buzzing about it. She said, I'm not really a big James Bond fan, but I love this um, film. And uh, I was like in the proximity of this conversation, but I hadn't yet seen it. And then, spoiler alert, she said, I loved it, but I couldn't believe that he died. And I hadn't seen it yet. I didn't know James Bond dies. And so, like, in that moment, my heart sunk because I thought, she's ruined it for me. She's ruined life for me. Um, now, it wasn't quite as severe as that. But she didn't say, spoiler alert. And so it kind of, like, affected the film for me as I watched it. Well, this preach really needs a kind of spoiler alert because what we're going to do is, as I said, we're going to look at the Sermon on the Mount together in this series, but we're actually going to dive right into the end of the Sermon on the Mount. So spoiler alert, this is how it ends, okay? This is the ending of it, what we're going to read together today. And it comes um, from Matthew chapter 7. Matthew is a, a book in the New Testament of the Bible, if you're not familiar with the Bible. Uh, it's a recording of Jesus' teaching and the things that he did. Um, and as I said, this is like the end of this sermon that he gave. So Matthew chapter 7, it says this. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious laws. So, 
As I said, this is at the end of Jesus' teaching. He's spent time talking about um, hypocrites, about people who kind of use their kind of ways of connecting with God and, and do it in a flashy way. And they kind of pray on the street corners out loud or they make sure that there's a trumpet sound when they give their offering. Um, or, you know, they, when they're fasting, when they're giving something up to connect with God, they make it really look like they're fasting so that people might look at them and say, oh, aren't you wonderful? He's just taught against all of those ways of connecting with God because he said, like, that's not connecting with God. That's just doing things to impress others. And then he goes into this story about two individuals. He talks about two people. And for the the sake of this story for today, we're going to call them Wise Winston and Foolish Fred. Apologies if you're called Fred here today or online. It's nothing about you. It's just helpful for alliteration. Wise Winston and Foolish Fred. And there's some similarities about Winston and Fred. The similarity is that they both, you're all wondering what's under here, right? There we go. Big reveal. It's just a house. Sylvanian house, kindly lent to me by my daughter. But Winston and Fred, they both chose to build a house. And then the other similarity is this, that they both experience bad weather. But the way that things look different for them both is based on the foundation that they built their house on. You see, the difference is that, as we're told, Winston, he built his house on a firm, solid foundation. The, the, kind of, the thought is that this sermon that Jesus gave, the Sermon on the Mount, it was um, given from a place around the Sea of Galilee. And um, the Sea of Galilee, well, it's an incredible view if you live on a hillside. I've, when I've been to Israel, I've had the privilege of staying in like a, a, a monastery, in a hotel monastery type thing, where you've got a view over the Sea of Galilee. And like, it is a view to die for. It's incredible. And so it made sense to build a house in this place. But the thing about Galilee is that it was also known for its storms and for sandy ground. And so the challenge then, if you're going to build a house around Galilee, is you need to dig deep. You need to dig deep foundations. And the thought was that you sometimes would have to get below the sand and the the kind of clay ground. You'd have to dig about 10 feet down before you get to what Jesus called in the story, the bedrock. And this is the key for the firm foundation. And Winston knew this. But Fred, he built his house on the sandy ground. The sandy ground represents the, the, the things that we can all build our lives on. Because the house is just an analogy of what we can build our lives on at times. And, and the sand, it represents the quick, the instant, the surface level way of building a house. Who's ever built a sandcastle? I'm like, since becoming a dad, I love to just try and impress my daughters with the best sandcastle that I can build. And so I like to build like proper fortresses when we go to the beach. And in the the last summer, we went to the beach and we built this epic sandcastle together. But just like probably about two or three hours after we built it, we sat there and watched as it just got washed away as the tide came in. You've probably had that experience of seeing how sandy ground is not the best foundation. For both Winston and Fred, the similarity for them both is that the bad weather came, but one of the houses, one of the homes was still standing. The other was washed away. The similarity between Winston and Fred, again, is that at one point they were both proud homeowners looking out over this incredible view that they had. But then the storm came. Jesus uses the analogy of how torrential rain came, flooding and ferocious wind. And the same is true for all of us, right? Life has this horrible habit of throwing things at us. Life has this habit of bringing 
it's storms. It could be relationship problems. It could be financial struggles. It could be um, health issues, just to name a few of the storms that I'm sure we're all familiar with in life. Sadly, they're all a guarantee of life, but that's where the foundation that we have built our lives upon becomes exposed. Each house looks secure in the good weather, when the sun is shining. But when the storm comes, it reveals the quality of the foundation that we have built our lives upon. Because storms of life are a guarantee for us all. Terrible storms can come, but this is the key today. And in this series, they don't have to destroy us. When those things come, when those storms come, they don't need to destroy us. That's why the rhythms that we build our life upon are really key. For wise Winston, like we said, he built his house upon the bedrock. And the bedrock is what this represents building our lives upon Jesus, building our lives upon the words of Jesus. But not just building our lives upon the words of Jesus. It's more than that. It's putting into action the words of Jesus. Foolish Fred, he built his house, as we said, upon the sandy ground. And the sandy ground represents the quick fixes, the shifting philosophies, the surface level morals, and the hypocritical religious deeds that Jesus had been teaching against. The sandy ground represents those vices that we all can turn to at times in life when life gets difficult. But the trouble is, they won't sustain us. Jesus is what will sustain us. And so what foundations and rhythms we build our lives upon is key. Jesus is showing us that we're far better off building our lives on him because he is the firm foundation. So these rhythms for helping us to connect with God, they'll help us to to, to grow, they'll help us to stay grounded when the storms of life come. Terrible storms will come, but they don't have to destroy us. And so just three quick things, some kind of warnings, some challenges, and some encouragement to us as we start out on this series of looking at these different rhythms that Jesus taught about. Here's an encouragement to us all. Jesus' teaching isn't easy to follow. If you've been journeying in church life and following Jesus for a while, you'll probably have learned that by now. It doesn't feel that encouraging, does it? When sometimes we read these, these different rhythms that Jesus talks about, and they're quite hard to follow. But the thing is in life, if we want shortcuts, if we want quick answers and quick fixes, then Jesus isn't going to be the answer for us. Jesus talked about the need to build our foundations on the bedrock. And the thing about the bedrock, as I said before, it takes time to dig down deep. They're not a surface level foundation. And the rhythms that we're going to look at together in the coming weeks, like they will challenge us. They'll leave us in a place where we'll have to dig down deep through things that maybe we've already learned in life. There might be some unlearning to do. Sometimes to put new rhythms in place in our lives, there might be the need for some sacrifice in our lives. We might have to give up some current rhythms in our lives in order to make room for these rhythms that will help us to connect with God. New rhythms will look different for us all, but we'll all need to have an open mind and heart and to demonstrate some humility. The story that we've looked at together is ultimately about the need to not just hear the words of Jesus, but to put them in action. Throughout this rhythm series, this could be a time of transformation. It could be a time of growth for us all. But that's only going to be the case if we actually want to connect with God. It starts from this place where we need to have this need, this desire to connect with God. And ultimately, for all of us, the desire can be rooted in this truth, that when the storms of life come, 
Jesus can be our constant. Jesus can be our guide. Jesus can bring his peace. He can bring his healing. He can bring his truth into deceit. Jesus can be our everything. And so if there's a desire in us to connect with God, then we'll want to dig down deep in order to put these rhythms in place. But we're going to talk about prayer. And prayer isn't easy. We're going to talk about um, fasting, which kind of in a, in a simplistic way is about giving up things. Often it's food in order to connect and spend more time with God. It's not easy to do that, right? We're going to be challenged from Jesus in the scriptures about our finances and what we do and how we kind of spend our money. And that's not easy. Jesus' teaching isn't easy to follow, but it's worth it if we'll only try. The second thing is this, we can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own strength. Creating rhythms in our lives that help us to connect with God, it won't come easy. So we're going to need some help. Journeying together like this on a Sunday morning will be a helpful thing to do. Like we're going to journey together. Something that we can all do though, a really simple thing is we can ask God to help us. As we come across these different rhythms for life, we can say, God, could, could you help me like to pray? God, could you help me with forgiveness? Like God, could you really help me with this? We can ask the Holy Spirit just to come and to lead us and to guide us and to help us. We can all do that. We can all reach out and ask him for help. There might be things that come up throughout this series that, you know, they're going to need some real deep work in our lives in order to bring about change and growth. I just mentioned a word there, forgiveness. Like forgiveness isn't easy. Forgiveness is something that we have to sometimes really work hard at. Like maybe in this series, it might be that something comes up and you think, I need some professional help for that. Like reach out, ask a counselor to help you. Another great thing that will constantly beat the drum of is get connected in a connect group. Because connect groups are great ways to journey through these things together, to learn from each other, where someone might say, you know what, I really struggle with prayer. And someone else might say, hey, I used to struggle with prayer, but like I found that this helps. And then together you journey together, you build each other up and you learn from one another. We can't do it in our own strength. Doing it in our own strength is a foolish Fred thing to do. But Winston, he would have been part of a connect group. Winston would have been asking the Holy Spirit to help him, to guide him, to, to show him what areas need to change, what areas need to grow. And then the third and final thing is this. There's always grace. There's always grace. As we talk about rhythms, rhythms is really just the word that, you know, it could be used to explain, like, you might have heard these things talked about as spiritual disciplines or as kind of things that make up a quiet time or a devotional time. Um, all of these things, though, there's a danger. And there's a danger with these kind of spiritual disciplines, these rhythms, that they can sound like things that you have to do. And then what happens is, and I've known this in my life, that then they become this kind of checklist in order to connect with God. But the danger with having a checklist for connecting with God is that we become legalistic about it. And the danger about having this checklist is that then we beat ourselves up when we don't pray in the morning or we don't read our Bible or we don't do whatever that kind of rhythm might be. And the thing is, we beat ourselves up and we shame ourselves for not doing it when we fall short. Or sometimes worse still, we beat up other Christians for not doing certain things in their lives. That's when rhythms become dangerous. We want to talk today, and Jesus in this series as we look together, he's talking about rhythms being something totally different from a checklist. He's talking about these rhythms being a way that we can connect with our Father in heaven. 
with the creator of the universe. And that's an incredible thing that if we want in our lives, we all get to do. We can, cre- we can connect with our Father in heaven. And what happens when we connect with him is that there's this heart connection. And what happens when we connect with him in that heart connection is that things about us begin to change. And we feel his hope. And we experience his love and his grace and his forgiveness and his mercy. And then in turn, we show those things to the world around us. And so rhythms are important to help us connect with God. But the thing is, there will be times when we don't always have rhythms in place in our lives. But there's always grace. Jesus went to the cross to die for us. Jesus went to the cross so that we don't need to feel shame anymore. Jesus went to the cross so that we could know his forgiveness, so that when we don't feel like we've connected with him, it's okay. We just go again. There's always grace. I want to finish with some other words of Jesus that came from Matthew chapter 11. And in these words, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? Then come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Notice how when Jesus says, I'll show you how to um, take a real rest, he's not just saying stop and do nothing. He's saying walk with me. That's the rest. Work with me. Go to work with me. That's the rest. Watch how I do it. Of course, there's a time to rest. There's a time to stop. But do that with Jesus. Work with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Create these rhythms with Jesus. He says, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you'll learn to live freely and lightly. As we journey together through this rhythm series, it's going to be all about how together we can connect with God. But connecting with God isn't supposed to feel like a a kind of checklist or a, a routine that we have to do. It's meant to feel like something that leads to a a light feeling. That leads to a feeling where we've connected with our Father in heaven and we've experienced his love and his grace in our lives. And so I wonder if you'll just stand. And in a moment, we're going to sing a song. And if you've been around in this church for a while, you could probably guess what this song is. Because this song is going to be a declaration about what we build our lives on. And just like Fred and Winston, we've got this choice. We can build our lives on the foundation of Jesus, or we can build our lives on the foundation of things that will wash away. But I wonder as we kind of step into this season together as a church, just in this moment, I think the Holy Spirit just wants to put things on all of our lives, on all of our hearts. And there might be certain rhythms in our lives that he just wants to say, hey, I really want to connect with you in this way, whatever it might be for you. And just in this moment, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And so before we sing this song, before we move on into worshiping together, We're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and speak to all of us. And together, I'd encourage you, just reach out to him. Ask him to help you. Ask him to guide you. So that in this season together, we can together learn these rhythms, these patterns of life for connecting with God. So that when the storms come, we're still standing with Jesus as our rock. Holy Spirit, will you come right now in this moment? We reach out to you and we ask for your help. Will you show us all individually what areas of our lives you just want to build in us to connect with you? Help us just to learn those unforced rhythms of grace. Jesus, you are gentle and kind. You are full of mercy, full of forgiveness, full of hope, full of life. And I pray that we would all know what it is just to experience you in our lives on a daily basis. In a way that affects 
our marriages, our relationships, our children's lives, in a way that affects our family lives, in a way that affects our work lives, in a way that affects our friendships, in a way that affects the places that we live in. God, whatever it might be that our world represents, help us to learn these rhythms that help us to connect with you and be an impact to the world around us. Amen. Let's sing this song just as a declaration together.